an endearingly crazy junkyard owner, a faux talk show host, and a paranoid housewife in a bizarre soap opera spoof. These Norman Lear shows pushed cultural boundaries and influenced an entire generation of TV programming, and we still can't stop watching them. From the first strains of its all-time classic theme song, viewers know that The Jeffersons is a very special entry in TV sitcom history. In this spin-off of All in the Family, the Bunker's neighbors George and Louise Jefferson move away to a deluxe apartment in Manhattan. Louise, aka Wheezy, was the only person who could help George keep his cool and stay in check. You know what they say about one rotten apple. Oh, I know. It spoils the whole barrel. <laughs> George Jefferson is an audacious and memorable character with remarkable depth, and one who could keep the Jeffersons socially and comically vital for 11 groundbreaking seasons. A show about a divorced woman who uproots her life to raise her two complicated teenagers was downright controversial in 1975, when One Day at a Time debuted. This Norman Lear co-creation demonstrated with compassion and humor that families came in all kinds and forms, such as the one comprised of Anne Romano, her daughters Barbara and Julie, and even their sleazy but big-hearted apartment superintendent Schneider. One Day at a Time made stars out of Valerie Bertinelli and Mackenzie Phillips, who realistically balanced fierce love and bicker as the Cooper sisters, while Pat Harrington Jr. stole every scene he was in as building superintendent Schneider, winning an Emmy for his work and redefining the sitcom trope of wacky neighbor for a generation. Well, I guess I should return his call. Can I use your phone? Hi! Help yourself. Talk about a terrific pedigree for an early 80s TV series. Palmerstown USA was a collaboration between TV Uber producer Norman Lear and Roots author Alex Haley, who both pulled from their childhoods during the Great Depression for plot lines and characters. A gentle family drama, Palmerstown was about the friendship between two little boys, one black and one white, during the economically fraught and racially segregated Deep South during the 1960s. A mixture of heartwarming family plots and nostalgia, Palmerstown never backed down from discussing racial politics or injustice, making for a truly unique hour-long show in the otherwise frivolous 1980s TV landscape. Different Strokes is best remembered today as a fun comedy starring all-time great child star Gary Coleman as the precociously wise, hip, and funny Arnold Jackson, the originator of one of TV's most iconic catchphrases. But believe it or not, the show was pretty daring when it first hit the airwaves in 1978. Shepherded by Norman Lear's production company, Different Strokes examined the differences between white and black Americans, as well as wealthy Americans and less wealthy ones, through a family-friendly comic angle. The series took place primarily in the lavish Manhattan apartment of lonely widower and single father Philip Drummond, who adopted his housekeeper's two children, Arnold and Willis, when she passed away. One of the first sitcoms about non-traditional, non-nuclear families, Different Strokes would provide eight influential years of Arnold navigating the problems of modern childhood and adolescence. Maud the Show was as bold, audacious, outspoken, and unlike anything else on television as Maud the Character, who was portrayed to fierce, unflinching perfection by the great B. Arthur. The show was a spin-off of All in the Family, since Maud was introduced as the polar opposite cousin of Edith Bunker. Maud knew what was the best for everyone, and didn't hesitate to tell them. Gordon is the best lawyer in the business. He is a lawyer's lawyer. Okay, Gordon, tell us, what are we going to do? Declare bankruptcy. And you call yourself a lawyer. Her brusque personality was the perfect counterpoint to the show's supporting players, from her wishy-washy fourth husband Walter, her daughter Carol, and Arthur, Walter's best friend and a stuffy conservative foil for Maud's fiery liberal outlook. While certainly a comedy, poking fun at suburban life and the upper middle class, Maud could also get serious, as the title character agonized over difficult situations where there weren't always clean and tidy answers. Capturing all the thrills of Washington, D.C. in 1992, the powers that be skewered and satirized politics and people corrupted by power and money. The action revolved around the deeply dysfunctional and hapless Powers family. The show was led by Senator William Powers, along with his ruthlessly social-climbing wife, his chief of staff with whom he was having an affair, his flaky daughter, her woefully depressed husband, and their mega-genius son. With an all-star cast featuring once-and-future sitcom legends like Holland Taylor, David Hyde Pierce, and Joseph Gordon Levitt, The Powers That Be was a sharp, witty, and very 90s sitcom, produced by Norman Lear and which heralded the arrivals of its creators, David Crane and Marta Kaufman, who would go on to make friends. 
Decades before our modern age of peak TV blurred the lines between comedy and drama, Norman Lear's Good Times did it in the relatively non-experimental world of 1970s television. Good Times was often very funny and adhered to standard sitcom ideas, but it could also be downright heartbreaking. Children found themselves in danger, and main characters died on Good Times. Mrs. James Evans, that's me! <laughs> We regret to inform you that your husband, James Evans, was killed in an automobile. Oh my God. Whether it was laughter, tears, or a sense of reliability, good times could be guaranteed to provoke a reaction out of viewers as they kept up with the trials of the Evans family while they fought their way to happiness. On the 2017 reimagining of One Day at a Time, a Cuban-American family deals with modern life in Los Angeles. The mother is a returning army veteran prone to PTSD symptoms, while her daughter copes with her burgeoning sexuality in a multi-generational household not used to anything untraditional in that regard. Even building superintendent Schneider got an update to become a well-meaning but often clueless man of his times. What, I was just explaining what mansplaining... Oh, wow! <laughs> With Norman Lear on board as a producer, 2017's One Day at a Time used the original premise as a jumping-off point to create something heartfelt, touching, and funny that explored modern-day social issues within the setting of a tight-knit family. Yes, your papi gives me money, but it's for the basics, and it's not a lot, but he's absolutely doing his best, and he will always be your papi. But make no mistake, when it comes to money, I'm your daddy. Just a year into its run, the Different Strokes universe expanded, placing cast member and Broadway veteran Charlotte Ray at the center of her own series. The facts of life moved Mrs. Garrett from the Drummond's apartment to upstate New York, where she served as a nutritionist and then headmistress, advisor, and mentor at Eastland Academy, a prestigious boarding school. The series hit its stride when it focused on Mrs. Garrett's interactions with four students in particular. Bubbly and sensitive Tootie, stuck-up snob Blair, tough would-be criminal Joe, and joke Cracking Natalie. A popular favorite on NBC for nine seasons and produced by Norman Lear's production company, The Facts of Life was a preeminent teen-oriented TV series for a generation, and a TV pioneer with its predominantly all-female cast. A daringly meta bit of genre-bending, Fernwood Tonight was a deliberately low-rent, cheesy-looking, amateurish talk show. In the world of the show, it was made by people who thought they were professionals, a send-up of Johnny Carson's The Tonight Show, starring 70s character comedian Martin Mole as host Barth Gimble, broadcasting from the fictional town of Fernwood, Ohio. Beloved comic and improviser Fred Willard got his big break as dim-witted sidekick Jerry Hubbard, as he helped Barth welcome and interview weird and local kooks. Doctor, how did you get all this phenomenal information? We did exhaustive research involving thousands of, of laboratory rats. We, we dressed them in these tiny lesions. <laughs> Jerry, you want to touch that? Yes, that's very we, good uh, tailoring. A year after its debut as a summer replacement for Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, Fernwood Tonight ran for another few months as America Tonight, operating on the hilariously far-fetched premise that Fernwood Tonight got picked up by a national TV network. Easily the silliest and most irony-soaked show in the canon of the usually straightforward Norman Lear, Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman was one of the first big spoofs of soap operas. This tongue-in-cheek comedy debuted in 1976 and aired five days a week in syndication for a year and a half. Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman was just as ridiculous as the average soap, following the life of innocent, put-upon, firmwood Ohio woman, Mary Hartman, as nutty things happen to and around her on a regular basis. I'm afraid, Mrs. Hartman, your grandfather is the Fernwood Flasher. Mary's mother talked to plants, her best friend was desperate to be a country star, and Mary herself wound up committed after suffering a nervous breakdown on TV. Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman was wild, and it was just as addictively fun when star Louise Lasser left the show and it morphed into Forever Fernwood. Red Fox was a lightning bolt of comic energy, a legendary club comedian and recording star for years before Norman Lear helped bring him to TV with the perfect project, Sanford and Son. Fox portrayed the endlessly cranky junk dealer Fred Sanford, a widower and father to his long-suffering son, Lamont. 
Sometimes, Lamont's Aunt Esther or Fred's friend Grady would stop by the house, but they were just targets for Fred's rapid-fire torrents of pointed insult comedy, met with howling delight by the studio audience. I want to arrest him! I want to try and convict him and sentence to the most severe penalty of all! Life in front of a mirror! <laughs> Here she comes again! Undeniably one of Norman Lear's most influential shows, All in the Family could also be considered one of the top sitcoms ever made. Rolling Stone, TV Guide, and Parade certainly think it is. You want my reaction? <laughs> Call me propaganda pure and simple. Oh. Oh. A cultural phenomenon that ran for pretty much the entirety of the 1970s, it captured the generation gap in all of its volatility while also modernizing the situation comedy, proving it could be a viable medium for political discussion. All in the Family centered around the proudly angry, bigoted Archie Bunker, a middle-aged, working-class conservative man deeply afraid and resentful of the rapid social change that gripped America in the 1970s. He especially butted heads with his adult daughter, Gloria, and her hippie husband, Mike, while he just plain bullied his adorable wife, Edith. And yet, Archie Bunker was lovable, because as resistant as he was to change, he had a huge heart which slowly opened, transforming him into a decent and kind man for the continuation series Archie Bunker's Place. Carol O'Connor gave a performance for the ages, giving depth, layers, and complexity to Archie Bunker. What's on the idiot box? It's only an idiot box if an idiot is watching it. <laughs> 